Warzone Ogvire. The emergence of the Great Rift shook the leagues of Votan to their foundations. Holds vanished amidst the roiling energies of the Warp Storm Belt. Trade routes were severed. Many kindreds were compelled to relocate their holdings, abandoning territories held for thousands of years and venturing out from the galactic core to seek more stable regions to settle. Both within the core and beyond its fringes, the Rift's advent has driven the kin into new conflicts, as well as stirring up old foes and settling them on a collision course with the Leagues. The kin do not recognize or name the Great Rift as a single manifest phenomena. They believe that to do so would lend further superstitious menace to a threat that is already menacing enough. They choose instead to name the greatest of the component warp storms that have opened within the galactic core, treating each as a separate peril to be weathered and overcome. One such raging empiric maelstrom opened upon the northeastern fringe of Greater Thurian League space and was soon named Orgvire, roughly translated in High Gothic as the Ogre. The Void Strider Kindred and Lacria's Kindred were swallowed up in the instant of its opening. Their pan-spectral arrays gave some small forewarning, and so ragged flotillas of kin refugee ships limped from the fringes of Ogvire days after its emergence. Their passengers telling of holds dissolved into raw madness or overrun by howling demons. Close on their heels came ravening chaos war fleets sailing the void in Baroque warships and monstrous hawks, they fell upon the Great Arthurian system bordering the Storm Zone. As more Chaos worshippers poured out of Ogvir by the day, it became clear to the Great Arthurian League that a terrible new threat had been unleashed upon their holds. Those kindreds whose holds lay directly in the invaders' path now faced a difficult choice. To hold their ground against the onslaught, or to fall back in the face of growing enemy strength. Exchanging messages as best they could via hardened LAS-COM relays, the hearthspakes of the Deep Rock Kindred, the Kindred of Vorton, Carl's Starbreaker Kindred, and Kindred Crimson too, all elected to hold fast. The Grimnir interfaced in their fanes with the Great Ethereum Votan, asking that it communicate their plight to the wider League, and begging its advice. Swift merchant craft and scout ships plunged into the warp, bearing the same messages to neighboring kindreds. Those facing the invasion would stand firm until the will of the Votan and the League could be made known, or until their defiance was judged too costly to maintain. Meanwhile, the ravening hordes of chaos blazed a trail of havoc towards the whole worlds that lay in their path. By a stroke of good fortune, Karl Uthar, the Destined, had recently returned to Obsid Gate, hold of his own kindred of Vorton. Ever the dynamic hero of his people, Uthar convinced the kindred of Vorton, Hothspeak, that they could not afford to simply mass behind their defences and await their enemy's onslaught. To do so handed all strategic initiative and opportunity to the invaders, and would abandon outlying facilities, resources, and personnel to their murderous attentions. The voice of the destined carried great weight amongst his kindred, who were swiftly convinced by his arguments. Thus, their mustard kin host broke into a number of oath bands. Some would remain to garrison Obsid Gate, while the rest would sally forth under the command of Uthar and several other prominent heroes to launch counter-attacks against the incoming Chaos Invaders. Their role would be to slow the enemy wherever possible, to evacuate all resources, kin and iron kin they could, and to destroy any facilities they could not rescue so as to deny their use to the foe. Uthar the Destin's Oath Band deployed to the outlying world of Torg. Riven by years of deep core tectonic mining, Torg was a hostile mass of jagged stone, exposed magma veins, convulsing supervolcanoes, and kin harvester fortresses wreathed in toxic fumes. 
Several immense renegade warships had already settled in the vulnerable world's orbit and the scourged warbands of heretic Astartes to the surface. Mutated chaos marines of the Purge and ferocious corn-worshipping world eaters had overrun Torg's void docks and cut bands of guild miners off within their harvester fortresses. Swiftly casting the eye of the ancestors over the direct strategic situation, Uthar formulated his battle plan and set his forces into motion without delay. In the void, the ships of Uthar's Oathband engaged the craft of the Chaos Worshippers at the command of Void Master Hemic. Their mighty conversion beam batteries and salvos of drill torpedoes mauled the Grand Cruiser Abomination and forced other Chaos Warships to break off orbital bombardment in order to respond. Hemic coordinated her small but potent fleet with consummate skill, fending off each assault by the Chaos Worshippers and handing out far worse punishment than her own ships suffered. Nox Hernkin pioneer bands, supported by light gunships and rugged Sagittar ATVs, swept through the high passes of the Fumarok Range to attack the World Eaters from the rear. They launched swift hit-and-run strikes using their pan-spectral scanners to maintain a fix on their enemies amidst the toxic murk. Goaded to action, many wrath-crazed corn berserkers broke off their assault on Harvest of Fortress 5 and pursued Nox bands into the hazardous passes. Separating into several smaller oath bands, Uthar the Destin's forces launched a massive drop offensive into the Shatterfields. Uthar himself led an armoured spearhead against the World Eaters of Lord Hakatar. Karl Sreck Thurken and her Oath Band met the Purge head on. As orbital fire from both sides rained down, the two swirling battles erupted into a storm of close range firefights and brutal offensives. While the foe were engaged to the north, Grimnir Kohn led an elite force of Einhir and Harskin to evacuate the Chthonians at Harvester Fortresses 2, 3, and 4. Guildkin and great quantities of raw materials were loaded aboard Hecaton land fortresses and the armoured carriages they drew behind them. Sensing their prey escaping, Earthak Skullripper led a massed teleport assault of World Eater Terminators that cut the Grimnair and her bodyguards off, even as kin forces were pulling out. Though many Chthonian berserkers turned back to hurl themselves into the fight, the living ancestor could not be rescued. The surviving Chthonians and many of the Hearthkin have since formed the Grudge Band of Khon. They will be avenged upon Urthak Skullripper or die trying. Uthar the Destined met Hakatar of the World Eaters upon the stone span bridging the Chasm of Embers. The two warriors battled back and forth along the crumbling expanse as their warriors fought and died around them and pillars of volcanic fire blasted up from below. Wounded but unbowed, Uthar at last wrong-footed his foe, taking the World Eater's right leg off with a vicious sweep and pitching him, still howling with fury, into the flames below. After several hours of rapid armoured warfare, and with the vast majority of kin assets ferried successfully up to his waiting void ships, Karl Uthar commanded a full retreat from Torg. Howled accusations of cowardice from the corn worshippers followed the retreat. They meant nothing to the kin. All that was worth extracting from the plant had been recovered, and any remaining assets were deemed not worth the cost in lives to salvage. The Great Arthurian League Oathbands fell back in good order, Void Master Hemic giving the enemy flotilla a last devastating volley to scatter their formations before commanding a plunge back into warp space. The tragic death of Grimnir Khon aside, the Torg offensive had proved successful, but the wider war zone Orgavir was becoming more fraught and violent by the hour. A great battle lay before the Great Thurian League, and Uthar the Destined would be needed elsewhere. I have been Baldemort, your faithful servant. A swift reminder about our other channels, links in the description. I hope you have enjoyed this brief introduction and will be joining me over the week as we explore this rich and fascinating new faction.
and thank you for your precious time. Now, no matter what you do today, do try to make some time for fun. Toodaloo.